Hello, welcome back to the Archuria Pigments 3 tutorial series. Uh, today we start our preset deep dives, the best part of any tutorial series, because this is where we get to see the synth in a real world context. All the theory that we've learned, we're now going to put into practice. One thing that I'm going to show you just before we actually deconstruct the preset itself is the sound designer tips screen. So this is the little um, light bulb in the top right hand corner. If you turn that on, there's also a drop down window next to it. You can engage both of these features. And it basically points you to what the sound designer thinks are the most interesting aspects of this preset. If you hover over the light bulb, you'll get a little bit of blurb about the sound designer, who they are, and a, a general description of the preset itself. And you get these um, yellow highlighted features to say, have a look at this. This might be interesting to you. So if we have a look at this FM type, control for instance um, if I just turn it off for a moment you can see that it's off it's not engaged it's not in use in this preset at all but if I press a note about the time we actually heard the preset actually you do get an interesting modulation effect so the sound designer is saying I've not mapped anything to this control but if you want to you might find this interesting Furthermore, if we have this advanced function engaged, left click to drag the end and right click to drag the beginning of these um, interest zones as uh, basically markers for yourself to remind you where the sweet spot is for this sound. Anyway, let's turn them off. Deconstruct the sound itself. So we've got two engines. Uh, one is a wavetable, two is a sample, and they're combining to make this sound. I'll turn each of them off momentarily. So that's kind of an organ sort of sound. And some more kind of almost a pad kind of sound. It's actually a piano sample, um, an electric piano C2. I'm just gonna turn them both back on for a moment while we jump quickly over to the FX tab. We're going to um, fly through these and disable them as quickly as possible so that they're not basically polluting the rest of the preset sound. So we start with the bit crusher. Best way to hear a sound is to really crank it up, hit, hear what it's doing and then bring it back down again. That kind of lo-fi kind of sound, let's get rid of that a very, very subtle parametric EQ, just um, tapering some of the high frequencies. Almost not worth mentioning, very, very subtle. And a compressor just taking away some of the sharpness of the transients. But having done that, we'll leave it off. Over on FXB, we've got a delay, surely we don't need to discuss what a delay does. And here's our chorus. Okay, so that's our basic sound with most of the effects taken away. In fact, I'll take the reverb away as well. The only extra thing to mention about the reverb is that because it's on an auxiliary send, uh, we've got control of it via the send knob. So let's turn it all the way down. what it's doing yeah very long decay and very sharp spike yeah, really interesting sound and interesting though it is we're going to turn it off so that's all the uh, effects disengaged we're not using the sequencer in this preset okay let's have a look at the synth then and i'm going to disable engine 2 for now so that we can really concentrate on engine 1 and figure out what it's doing. So that's our basic sound. It sounds pretty straightforward, doesn't it? <laughs> there are hidden hidden dangers here. First thing that we want to have a look at is the filter bank. So this is the filter from the Oberheim SEM synthesizer from the early 70s. It's basically just a classic filter bank that's been lifted out of the emulation that Archuria have done and plopped into pigments. We're in low pass filter mode. 
So we've got a low pass filter. Well, there are a few interesting aspects to it. Firstly, let's have a look at the modulation sources. There are three of them. We've got the modulation wheel. So I'm basically just looking at the colored um, zones that highlight when I hover over the knob. Then we've got keyboard modulation, which means the low notes will be duller when it's on and the high notes will be sharper. And finally, we have macro one. And there's a filter one cutoff, so there it is. So they're all cumulative effects. They all combine together to give the total filter one cutoff value. But that's not what's interesting about this filter as far as I'm concerned. It's this FM control underneath. So in the bottom left hand corner, it says this is the FM amount, adds uh, uh, frequency modulation to the filter. So what this is basically doing is it's taking a, a feed from a modulation source somewhere else in the synthesizer and it's modulating the filter cutoff. Now it's so subtle at 0.013 that you can't really hear it. But if I turn this all the way up and bear in mind, look, go, go back to our sound design tips. The sound design is directing you to this control. They think it's interesting too. That's what we get. So what is that? Well, when it says engine one, it basically means it's taking its feed from the modulator of engine one, this thing here. And so if I turn the tuning, you can see it's currently set to 19 semitones. If I mess with this, you're gonna hear a new sound. Turn it all the way down. just get into the stage where you're almost, not quite, but almost able to identify individual oscillations. So this is, remember when we were talking about the modulator, an audio level oscillator. So here it's oscillating so slowly that the tuner's actually not picking it up, but it's probably still around, I don't know. Oh, we could, we could find out in Insight, couldn't we? 29 hertz, it's right on the uh, limit of hearing but when that's used as a frequency modulation source in the filter bank we get that really cool and then we bring it back down to the tiny amount it was the 0 0.013 and we've got a very, very subtle modulation to the filter bank. It's really lovely. We've got another interesting value over on this side of the synth, but this is a bit of a rabbit hole. Brace yourselves, we're going in deep. Amplitude modulation is being mapped to Combinate 1. Let's have a look at Combinate 1. It's some sort of weird, almost random algorithm. You can see that there is pattern to it, but it's unidentifiable what it is. The control itself is set to zero, but you can see this little blue line. When we hover over the control, you can see that that's coming from macro three. Let's have a look at macro three. We do really need to do some Sherlock Holmes work on this one. This is quite, quite, quite good fun. So what do those two pieces of information together tell us? Macro three is mapped, ignore the other stuff for now. It's mapped to the amp modulation amount. First thing that I'm gonna do is turn this value up a bit so that we can really hear what's going on. Okay, there's very dramatic modulation of the amplitude and it's in accordance with Combinate 1. This is what's controlling the volume of the sound. This is Macro 3, so we have total control over this value from the M3 knob. If I turn M3 all the way down, we lose all of these values. So it's not modulating anymore. Crank it back up again. Okay, now let's have a look at Combinate 1 and try to figure out how it's getting its algorithm. Where is this value coming from? Well, it's a multiply algorithm, which is pretty complex. But basically, it's taking two LFOs as source and modulator 
And the combination of these two things with via this algorithm is generating this curve. So that's basically almost random. LFOs one and two are doing their own thing. You can see that they're both different shapes cycling at different speeds. These two waves are being combined together to result in this algorithm. And then whatever value that's outputting is being applied to the amplitude modulation. So it's a little bit, you know, that's quite a long uh, string for us to follow, but it's worse <laughs> because LFO one and two are themselves modulated. But the other piece to the puzzle is RAND2. So the random algorithm, and you can see that there's a little purple dot on the LFO tab telling you that's giving you a clue as to what's going on here. And now that we've kind of zoned in on it, you can see that we've got rate modulation being mapped. And so following that trail of breadcrumbs, we finally get back to RAND2 where we see these tiny, tiny amounts of modulation being applied to each of these curves. If I crank them up a bit, now we need to know what triggers RAND2 in order to see some effect from this. Well, RAND2, are you following me? I'm sorry, this is just difficult, what can I say? RAND2 takes its trigger off the keyboard. So having seen that, and it's a sample and hold, we're gonna jump back to the LFO, I think that's a more interesting view. I'm gonna press multiple keys and watch what happens to the two LFO rates. Every time I press a key, we get a new trigger and a new speed. Those two LFOs are then being combined to output in this combinate method. And so every time I press a key and the LFO speed changes, we get a brand new algorithm being calculated. And this in turn is feeding into combinate one. Now I cranked a lot of values up very extreme there. So everything is crazy, but they were really, really subtle values. Both of these values, I think they were at 0.04. And so we don't get anywhere near such a dramatic change. Bring that back down again as well. And so here we are now back to our nice gentle amplitude modulation. Okay, you probably deserve a cup of tea after that one. So I'll give you a moment to gather your thoughts. Now let's have a look at Engine 1's uh, sound itself. Because the thing is relatively straightforward. It's a wavetable, it's in a static position. The um, design tips are telling you, yes, have a play with the position and you're gonna get classic kind of wavetable stuff. But the most interesting thing about Engine 1 is its unison settings because it's in chord mode. So we've got two voices here generating pictures and it's almost indistinguishable because they're currently set to octave. So when I press a key, you're actually hearing two different pitches there. If I set the voices down to one, that's the basic tone. And then you can hear that overtone coming in. Sound design tips say that this chord knob is interesting because those are different pitched second voices that's really cool we've also got something fruity going on with the fine tune control you see if i just get back to the standard window and i hover over the fine control uh, it's highlighting rand 2 and m3 let's have a look at those and we were just looking at rand 2 here is the engine one fine you can see that mapped but it takes a side chain from macro three. In other words, the value of this control here determines how much the pitch uh, of engine one is modulated by. Again, I'm gonna crank it up so that it's much easier to identify. Quite 
quite clearly here. The pitch modulating there. Turn M3 down. That effect goes away. But obviously it was very, very subtle indeed. So a tiny amount of fine tune control total. And then that's determined by M3. Subtle is good. The envelope is actually pretty straightforward. We've got a sloping decay value, which means it basically gets quieter over time. The longer I hold the key down, it just slides down this slope. And one of our macro keys, uh, macro four, is mapped to the envelope decay. So if I turn this all the way down, it's going to travel as fast as it's allowed. And now it's now glacially slow. You can see that Macro 4 is also mapped to FX5 mod. Let's jump quickly over to the um, FX. Uh, FX5 is the delay. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4 is blank. Delay is the fifth. And you can see if I hover over the time control, it tells us that M4 is mapped to it. So this is basically just going to control the, uh, the rate of, deal of delay. Turn that back off. Okay, that's M4 and M3 dealt with. Macro 2, which is labeled time. Uh, gives us control over the VCA attack. So at its minimum value, instant attack, maximum value, still a pretty quick attack because we're only operating on a 0.22 here. I increase that value, it's going to take much, much longer. You can see the attack stage of the envelope increasing. All of these env2 values aren't used, envelope 2 isn't mapped in this preset. And we've gone backwards, but why not? And we've already seen that uh, macro 1 is mapped to the filter cutoff. Now we're nearly done, because even though there's a second engine to look at, this thing is pretty simple. It's a straightforward electric piano sample. there's almost nothing dramatic going on with this sound. A couple of interesting points. The output is mapped to F2, so this sound isn't going through uh, the filter one. It's going basically into an empty filter two bank. If I pull this across, then we don't get that in its normal mapping. And the other thing to note is that on macro three, the amp assignment, we've got some engine two volume control. Pretty straightforward stuff. So what at first seems like a fairly unassuming preset uh, has some hidden depths. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.